After Rocky V, it took 16 years before we got a new Rocky film. And then we had Rocky Balboa, which as a title, I do not like that title. I would have preferred that it just be called Rocky VI. Yes, I know why they changed the title. I get it. I understand marketing and it's been a while, but it still should have been called Rocky VI because it is Rocky VI. Now, this movie came out in 2006 and it holds a special place in my heart because it is the first Rocky movie I saw in theaters because I had to see it. Now, this is also the final Rocky movie with the name Rocky in the title because starting with the seventh movie is Creed goes in a different direction, but not that different. Not as crazy as you might imagine, but let's talk about Rocky Balboa. So 2006, it came out. Rocky, of course, once again played by Sylvester Stallone. He directs this movie and he wrote the story as well. It's no secret that Stallone was not happy with Rocky V. And he especially wasn't happy with it being the last one. But so much time had passed since you know Rocky V and he had not thought about reprising Rocky one more time or bringing it back. But with nostalgia being a thing as it always is and with the fact that a lot of the medical problems that, bo that doctors or that, that boxers had um, back in the day have been sort of remediated better now, especially the, the condition that he had, the brain issue that he had. Obviously, boxers still have brain damage if they take enough hits to the head. It sort of opened up the possibility for a Rocky comeback, and that's how we got Rocky Balboa. Like I said, this movie was the first Rocky movie I saw in theaters. This time, of course, not only is, is Sylvester Stallone playing Rocky again, we've got Tony Burton coming back as Duke Evers, Tony Duke Evers. We've got, you know... Burt Young playing Paulie one more time. And we have Antonio Tarver playing Mason the Lion Dixon, as well as Milo Ventimiglia playing Robert Balboa Jr., Rocky Jr., who is much older. Rocky Jr. was played by him because I believe Sage Stallone was working on a different movie at the time, although he would unfortunately pass a few years after this movie was made, so... It just sucks he couldn't play him again. But the guy who they got in this movie was great. And it also brings in different characters. Um, I already mentioned, you know, I mentioned Antonio Tarver, the second real boxer to play in this movie. We've also got Geraldine Hughes playing Marie, who is the same girl from the first Rocky movie. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to this movie is that Rocky Balboa did what Rocky V tried to do, but did it better. Now Rocky's retired, 60 years old. He's widowed because Adrian's dead, which is a bummer. That was a huge bummer for me because it sucks that she died. It's very sad that she died, and it really hurt that she died off screen. Talia Shire would have been great to come back and be Adrian one more time. I wish that she would have, but... I guess Stallone decided to change that because it makes it more painful for Rocky to not have her in his life. Like, he's really alone. And so he gets reacquainted with his first girlfriend, which is fighting. It's fighting. So, again, I, I love that this movie sort of did what Rocky V tried to do, but did it better. For example... Instead of Rocky just being a broke bum again for losing all his money, he opens up a restaurant called Adrian. So the fact that he's still a business owner, he's still in there telling stories about the good old days, like that's a much better ending to the Rocky character than what we saw in Rocky V. I think Rocky fans accepted like, okay, he might not be a multi-millionaire anymore, but just him having his own business, his own restaurant... He could at least stay afloat and live a happy life retired. But the bug kicks in Rocky because he starts to see this computerized simulation of Rocky Balboa versus Antonio. Tar well, it wasn't Antonio Tarver. It was Mason the Line Dixon, the current heavyweight champion. He starts to think, maybe I do have a chance. And then little by little, as the film progresses, him thinking about Adrian, him thinking about his past, 
really reignites that fire for him to try boxing one more time. And so he gets booked in an exhibition against Mason Dixon because Mason Dixon is also, you know, frustrated at being a guy who the the public doesn't really like because he's destroying challengers and tough guys from the Rocky era just aren't around anymore. So he figures fighting Rocky in Vegas is a way to kind of give him credibility. That's where this whole thing comes from. Mason Dixon as a character isn't really a bad guy. He's a charismatic and cocky athlete, but he's not entirely dislikable. Like, he doesn't really show... Like, he's not really respected. You can tell he has a chip on his shoulder. But as the film progresses, you understand that he's not like Clubber Lang was or, or even like the young Ivan Drago. You know, speaking of which... Did y'all know that Clubber Lang was supposed to be in this movie? They originally wanted to have Clubber Lang do commentary for the final fight with Mason Dixon, and he was supposed to be a born-again Christian, and he was supposed to call the fight. You know, it's not the same Clubber Lang. Mr. T was supposed to come back, but they couldn't get it done, so they took that part out. So this movie is great because Rocky's life makes more sense. The story makes sense. Him getting the urge, you know, he's got something left in the basement, as they say, the beast inside of him. Then by the end of the film, he tells Paulie the beast is done. Like, I got it out of my system, which is the big fight with Mason Dixon and how it slowly builds up. But the scenes in this movie, what I loved about it is it's not it's not all about boxing. Him getting reacquainted with Marie... Um, who called him a creepo in the first film and seeing how her life took a term and then, you know, her son. He, I don't think he's trying to hook up with Marie in like a romantic way. I don't see that being the case. I know some folks have said it's kind of implied. I didn't see that. But he definitely is kind of looking for a family. You know, his son is busy and doesn't really have a lot of time for Rocky and his son has his own arc because he's sort of tired of all the breaks in life being because of his last name. So the characters in this movie are a lot stronger. Rocky's a much strongly written character. You know, Rocky's son, way more interesting in this movie. Marie, very interesting. Maybe not the best part because their relationship is a little weird, but she's an interesting character. And I've had some of my friends say, you know what, man, the Rocky trilogy is Rocky 1, 2, and Balboa. They don't even want 3, three 4, and 5 to be there. Now, I love 3, so... For a long time, it was Rocky 1, 2, 3, then Balboa because I decanonized 4 and 5 until the Creed movies came out because I didn't like them at all, like what they did with them anyways. I don't dislike the movies, but what they did with them I didn't like with the characters. This movie sort of tells you that, you know what, Rocky's going to be okay. Like as a fan of the character, as a character, the ultimate underdog, the guy who you root for, you want him to be okay. You want him to be in retirement. You want him to be healthy. And that is actually a plot point that they recognize going into the Creed movie, right? We'll talk about that when we get there. But Rocky VI, really powerful, brings back Gonna Fly now, which we haven't heard since Rocky III, the classic training music. The training vignette in this one is great. I love the scene with, with Duke. You know, we need speed. You don't have it. And there's calcium deposits. So we're going to go with good old-fashioned blunt force trauma, powerful hits to feel like he you know that'll rattle his ancestors every time you hit him he'll feel like kissing the express train like i love that whole sequence with him how their strategy is they might not be faster than mason dixon but when they connect boom it's gotta hurt that's the whole like you know strategy and it works because when rocky and mason dixon fight he hurts him he hurts him and mason dixon was in a war and it, it, it's great I love that about this movie. I also love that this movie has a lot of contemporary feelings to it. I love how they show um, the, the, the realism as far as Max Kellerman and Larry Merchant. We have the real HBO sports, HBO boxing people, Jim Lampley. We have real commentators. Real reporters. Stitch, the cut man, is in this movie. Like, they really brought the Rocky series into the modern era and really made it seem as legitimate as possible to the point where the footage of the press conference and the footage of the actual final fight was shot with real pay-per-view cameras, not with traditional film cameras. That's why it looks so different. That's why the movie shot so different there. 
because the majority of those scenes, not all of them, but the majority of them were shot with actual like HBO sports cameras. And that's, that's a beautiful touch, man. It's the little things, you know, that's, that's something that only a filmmaker like Stallone would think of to give it more of a modern approach because fights had changed so much. We live in the era of HD now. We've got graphics on the screen. Why not actually bring in some contemporary people that cover the movies? You know, and it just makes more sense to do it that way. And that's one thing I love about this movie. It's the little things. It's the little touches that count. The scene of the metaphor of Rocky wanting to get the old sick dog and not the young one. You know, when he's at the um, at the dog pound with steps. Like, all that stuff. Like, does he still have it? And even though in the main ending, the movie has two endings, Rocky does not, you know, Rocky does not win the fight. It wasn't about winning. It's like the first Rocky movie. This movie mirrors the first film. And like I said, it does Rocky V better than Rocky V, where it shows, you know, he doesn't have to win the fight. Going the distance with a guy who's like at this point 30 or so years younger than him, who is a legitimate boxer, and he went the distance with him and even hurt him, that is enough. That is enough for Rocky to say, you know what? That's it. The the the, the beast is gone from inside me. I'm done. I got it out of my system. And I love it. I love that. I love the story in this film. Rocky Balboa is truly, I think it's underrated. I know it was critically acclaimed when it came out, and Rocky fans like it, but after watching it back, I enjoyed it so much more. There's no wasted scenes, like nothing. And then the part at the end after, and this part is damn, is super emotional, super emotional, because I'm a guy who, I've had a lot of my, like my parents are dead, I've had some of my friends pass away, so that kind of stuff hits me in the heart. When he goes to Adrian's grave again, and he says, yo, Adrian, we did it. Just like in the second movie. So powerful. So powerful. She's not there, but she'll always be with him. And he thinks about her, you know, when Mason Dixon's like beat, beating on him. And she's still his inspiration, even in death, man. Powerful. Just, you can't be a Rocky fan and appreciate the first three movies and not love this one. This one is more along the lines of the first two. It really feels like it has the same tone and feel of the first two movies. It's just that the last third feels like an actual sporting event because they wanted it to be an actual sporting event. They shot it in an arena with a real boxing ring and real boxing people in it. And it's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful story. And honestly, this is the perfect ending to the Rocky franchise. I mean, yes, Creed is great. We'll talk about that next time. But if Rocky ended here, not only would I have been happy, but I was happy. I left the movie theater genuinely happy because they did it. They really did it. It was just a, a phenomenal film. Even the boxing community loved it. And it was super realistic compared to other ones. So all of that, like, you know, the, the sound effects were more realistic. Like, it just felt like an actual modern movie. And it was great. Phenomenal film. What more can I say about it? Even Antonio Tarver was good playing Mason Dixon. We have come to the end of the Rocky films. But in the next edition of the Rocky Road to Creed 3, we're going to talk about Creed. Rocky 7. And a movie that, not going to lie to y'all, man, it made me cry three times. The first time I saw it, I cried Three times. Ryan Coogler, probably his masterpiece. Some would say Black Panther. Some would say Fruitville Station or Fruitvale Station. I would say it's, it's, it's Creed. We'll talk about that next time. Take care. See you in Creed.